In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the starter on this Toyota Camry. This has the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. The starter is located right beside the battery. So if you need this or any other part, check us out at oneauto.com. Let's get started. For this procedure, we have to disconnect the battery. I'm gonna take the negative terminal off, take a 10 millimeter wrench or socket and ratchet and loosen up this mounting nut on the terminal. Once you twist it a few turns, you should be able to pull this up and off. I'm gonna clean this corrosion before we reinstall it, but set it aside to where it cannot make connection with the battery terminal. And if you have one of these insulators, I'm gonna set it here so I can clean everything up before I put it back together. To get to the starter, we have to remove this air intake piece here. And to do that, you don't necessarily have to remove this cover here that has a bunch of push clips going all around. You can just pry it up here and here. It has two 10 millimeter bolts. And to give yourself a little bit more space, you can pop this push clip out. Now, whether you have this style or just the style that you pry out directly, um, you do what you have to do. But for me, I have to press the center down on this and then the push clip comes out. You can do this with a trim tool or a little pocket screwdriver. And now you can take a 10 millimeter wrench and if you pull this up, you'll see the bolt right in here. You stick your wrench on it and loosen it up. A lot of times these can be somewhat rusty in here. So uh, make sure you don't break it or strip out the head of it but you should be able to easily remove this. Once this is out, we'll take the, uh, we'll pick up the plastic on this side. And this one's a little trickier to see, but here it is, it's located right about there. Break this one free as well and remove it the rest of the way. And this is all that's holding this air intake piece on. So once we get this out, we should be able to just pull up on this, just like that and remove it. There's the starter right there. I'm gonna start by disconnecting the signal wire, which is this small one here. I'm pressing on the connector and then gonna help it uh, come off with a little pry bar. Sometimes these get stuck in here. Once you take that off, if you peel this boot back, you'll see the main power wire. That is a 12 millimeter mounting nut. So let's grab a socket or a wrench and take that off. Break this free. This shouldn't be very tight, although sometimes it does get stuck. And once you unthread it a little bit, you should be able to just pull it off. Oh, try not to lose that. Now you can take the main power wire off, set it aside. Two 14 millimeter bolts is all that holds this starter on. So let's put our tool on there, break them free. Before I take this one out all the way, now that it's broken free, I'm actually gonna go for the other one, which is a little bit more difficult to reach. You can see it right down there. And uh, I'm going to remove, well, break it free and remove this one first all the way because, uh, well, it's gonna be a little trickier to access. Once you get it broken free most of the way, you should be able to unthread it easily by hand unless the bolts are severely corroded. Okay, there's one. Now you're gonna have to hold the starter, otherwise it'll put pressure on this bolt and you won't be able to easily loosen it by hand and remove this front bolt. With that out, we can now remove the starter. Sometimes they get seized in there, right in this area, and you'll have to tap them with a rubber mallet or pry them a little bit. This one is ready to go. So pull it out at an angle like this. Try to find the best way to uh, basically tilt it for it to come out of here. And there is your starter. If you have a lot of corrosion down there, clean it up with a uh, piece of sandpaper, a wire brush or whatever you have. I'm just gonna wipe mine off. Uh, this area is in fairly good condition here, so I'm not too worried about it. But uh, just so you know, the starter does ground through here. Basically, it's touching the engine block and that's the ground for it. So if you aren't making a good connection here, you're gonna have some uh, starting issues. But having said that, let's drop the new starter in here. There 
There we go. Slides in nice and smooth, bottoms out all the way. Make sure your wires aren't pinched or caught anywhere. I'm gonna wait to put those on. And for now, I'm just going to put on this front bolt because it's the easiest one to start and this will ensure that everything is lined up. I'm gonna thread it in as much as I can do it by hand. I guess all the way it is. And let's put in the other one that goes on the back there. Might be a little trickier to get to. If you want to, you can pull this hose off of this bracket a little bit and uh, it should give you just a smidge more room. This one, once you get your hand in here, you'll have to kind of do it by feel, but once you start it in, you should be able to use that extension with your socket, if this is what you use to remove it, and just thread it on. Okay, that's bottomed out. So I'm gonna grab the torque wrench, torque these down. The torque for both of these is 27 foot-pounds. I won't be able to stick my torque wrench back there just because of the space limitations. So I'm going to put my ratchet in with the extension and 27 foot-pounds is really not super tight. So I'm just gonna basically snug it up. There we go. Just about an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out and gets snug. That should be plenty tight. I can, however, torque this one, so I will. Once again, 27 foot-pounds is the torque. All right, that's 27. Grab the power wire and peel this boot back and inspect it. You wanna make sure that it doesn't have corrosion on it. Mine is okay, but it does have a little bit, so I'm going to try to clean this up the best I can with a wire brush. It's not severe. I just wanna make sure it's gonna have a good contact so I can get proper amperage delivered to the starter. That looks good right there. So now I'm going to slide this over, make sure that these two tabs line up with the flat spots on the starter. And now with this on, let's put on the mounting nut. As you snug this up, make sure this still lines up here. And when you tighten it, you just want to snug it a little bit. These are uh, brass studs and they can break internally. So right here is bottomed out just a little bit extra and that is plenty tight. At this point, if you wanted to, you could put some dielectric grease over it or some battery terminal protector on here so you can protect the terminal. But it does have this boot, which is supposed to do that job and it seems like it's been working for this one. So I'm just gonna put the boot back and don't forget about the signal or trigger wire, whatever you wanna call it. Click that in. Now let's put this piece back. Make sure it slides onto the air filter housing properly. And then you're gonna to have to tuck it underneath the uh, radiator uh, top cover here and line it up with the two bolt holes. Once these line up, slide the bolts down. I suggest putting some anti-seize or grease on these threads because they do often seize up. Uh, they're pretty much out in the open here. And tighten them down. Just snug, that's all you need to do. Let's put the other one in. and snug, grab your tool, and then if you remove this push clip, go ahead and put it back. Now take your negative battery terminal and connect it to the battery. Sometimes it can make a little spark. I cleaned up all the corrosion. I also got rid of that pad that's down there and sometimes it's useful. Other times if it was full of corrosion like mine was, it's actually worse off being there, so you're better off taking it off. Anyway, Put this battery terminal back on in, make it nice and snug, 
Don't crush it down because it'll actually stretch this right here and then you will have a hard time tightening it up in the future. As long as you can't spin it by hand like this, you're good to go. So this is tight enough. Keep in mind on some of these vehicles when you disconnect the battery, you may have to recalibrate the steering angle sensor and that entails turning the steering wheel all the way to the left and then all the way to the right and then centering it up so that the sensor can relearn its positions on both ends and in the center. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. If you have anything to say, leave it in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our latest content. Thanks for watching.